We all love the sound of money, and a $1,500 sign-on bonus sounds even better. That's right, Belicio Foods of Jackson is offering a $1,500 sign-on bonus to new employees. Receive an extra $100 your first six weeks, then $400 after day 90, and $500 after day 180. Don't wait. Apply online at BelicioFoods.com slash careers today. That's BelicioFoods.com slash careers. Come work for a company who truly values their employees. Come work for Belicio Foods. Show some love for the graduating seniors in your life with custom-made gear from Zip Printing in Jackson. Yard signs, banners, screen-printed t-shirts, and more. Zip Printing can do it all. Visit yourtotalmedia.shop to browse all of Zip's gear to show your school spirit for the class of 22. Zip also has everything you need for graduation parties like custom photo cards, invitations, and napkins. Call 740-286-3023 or find them on Facebook at Zip Printing Signs and Marketing. Air this morning. Something in the air, isn't it? It is. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all the excitement about the Festival of Flags. I love that. <laughs> it, it is exciting. And welcome, everyone, to another edition of the morning show. And we are here on Main Street TV this morning. Of course, Jennifer here to start your morning with our good friend Joyce from the Festival of Flags. Good morning, welcome. everyone. Good morning. Yes. And, um, I don't know. Did we get to talk last year? I can't remember. We did. Re okay. Yeah, we did. Okay. I Over was trying to, to remember building. if it. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah, and then the COVID year before was, that was 2020. Yeah. Um, yeah, we don't even want to talk about Nobody talked to anybody that year. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Um, but no, so the Festival of Flags, believe it or not, we are coming up on Memorial Day weekend. Isn't it incredible? Yes. Has, has this, uh, how how this five months get past us? I have. Amazing. No idea. Um, and I think that one of the most beautiful sights in the world, um, and it will make you tear up no matter what, and it is breathtaking, <laughs> is driving into Oak Hill, Ohio on Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. Flags, are, the, the the scout troop down there puts up the, all the flags on the main drag, you know? You, you drive in, and it, the, the 93 is lined with American flags, yeah. and it is just, I don't need, surreal. It, it really is. It's, it's a beautiful gorgeous. sight. It's a beautiful. It come is. down that hill, and they start right at the bottom of the hill. Yep. Go all the way in. That's why. All I'm, the way I'm, through. Yeah, all the way through town. And it is just, <clears throat> I, I can remember being, like, younger when I first started at the radio and stuff, and Dad sending me out to fairs and festivals, and I was talking about, I think the Wild Turkey Festival might have been one of the first ones I did, but the Festival of Flags was one of the first ones that I did as well. And I can remember, you know, being young and driving down through there and just being like, yeah, what is going on here? This is amazing. I know. In little old Oak, Oak Hill, Ohio. Little you know? old Oak Hill, yes. And when I was driving up this morning, the, the scouts already have all the flags out um, along 93 and along the railroad tracks there behind... Uh, <sighs> KFC and yes. the, the whole, and then people, of course, are starting to put their flags out on the streets. But one of the goals, a um, number of years ago, oh, I'm talking, you know, long, many, 15, a 20 years ago. A few years ago. That's <laughs> what we ago. like to say. Yeah. But, um, but a lot of the residents, I mean, even on the side streets, uh, everybody had flags out. And that was a real big goal of the festival committee back at that time. Sure. Now, many of the residents continue to do so. So, you know, you'll drive up, up uh, Madison or Love Monroe it. Street and you're still going to see lots of flags out in people's front yards. Just one of mine. And I don't even, you can't even see my house because I live in the woods. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, but by golly, you're doing your part, I right? got my flag out. Yes, <laughs> ma'am. So, Joyce, let's talk for a minute about um, how did the Festival of Flags come to be? Do you even know? Oh, of course. Um, it started back in 1992, and there was a, a group of people in Oak Hill that formed a committee to try to preserve the old central elementary school. Okay. And um, um, although their efforts to save the school building failed, 
they the festival of flags came out of that but it they, used to be there right it was because on that's the grounds what i remember right. it being there when it i was first on the when grounds i was young, there. Yeah, younger yeah younger so they and that was a fundraising effort to try to raise funds to save the school building okay so that's how, that's how it all began and it's just continued so the first festival of flags was 1993 okay so now this year would have been the 30th, except for 2020 happened. Except for you know, that, so, that stuff yeah. in which we don't want to talk yeah, about Yeah, we don't want to talk about that. But it's still around, you know. know. But anyway, so so that's how it all that's how it all began. And it was just a, a group of uh, citizens in Oak Hill that really w- endeavored to save that building. And they got together and formed a committee. And here we are today. The rest is history, if they, <laughs> the rest as is you history. say. Yes. Yeah, very, very much so. <laughs> The Festival of Flags, um, of course, always every Memorial Day weekend right. down in the village of Oak Hill. Now, obviously, the Central School site or Central School's not there anymore. Central so School's gone, but we have, have the beautiful the it's a park Central now. Memorial Park. Yes. Yes, and I was fortunate enough to work on the committee that developed the plans for that park. Perfect. And um, and it's a beautiful spot. And uh, the is. Oak Hill Chamber of Commerce uh, pretty much um, takes maintenance duties over keeping the park in, in order. And I'm sure the village helps. A bit, but it's the Oak Hill Chamber of Commerce um, that is responsible for that park. But I was just there for a graduation party on um, this past Sunday, and it's, oh, it's just what a beautiful venue. It is a lovely venue, and I know a lot of the children uh, I shouldn't call them children, students uh, <laughs> who are going to the prom uh, love to come yes. over there and have do their photos, their pre prom photos uh, in that gazebo because it's such a beautiful spot. So it yeah. is. So, you know, while the, the central school itself was not able to be salvaged right. as it was a little bit too far gone i think right it um, was um the site is still a place of enjoyment Absolutely. for people and and the kids still get to use it and, yeah. and everyone gets to utilize it i so. went to school at central did you i did yeah. you know it makes me sad because <clears throat> um same thing like kennis you know all mm-hmm. of our local elementary schools also right. were kind of in disrepair and right. and um were torn down so you think about it's just kind of sad but it's kind of it's nice to see the sites being used for for other things but it's also sad that part of your childhood is gone. Right, it is. And, you know, I and a lot of other people that live in Oak Hill still gripe, like, about once a year we have a, a gripe session about the o- old Oak Hill High School having been torn down because that was such a sentimental sure. spot for so many of us, oh, you gosh, know. Oh, gosh, yes. And the auditorium there that was so wonderful. And, you know, a lot of people in the village felt that that, that part of the building should have been saved for community activities oh, and that kind yeah. of thing. But it, it it wasn't possible, I understand, because of uh, granting um, requirements. Listen, for, yeah. a lot of times it all comes down to money. And that's what's, right. And unfortunately, that's, yeah, uh, if it's feasible absolutely. or not. Yeah. But so. uh, wonderful memories that we have of yes. that school. Well, great. and you know what? They live on through us. So that's they do. okay. Yeah. And then you, now, did you go to the New Jackson? You didn't go to the New Jackson. You went to, what's the middle school now, yes. right? Yep. Yeah. So that yeah. was my high school. Right. Yep. So, yeah, it's all a little bit different now, um, but that's okay. And um, so, yeah, our our memories are still bouncing around in Absolutely. there in a, in a different way. Absolutely. So. All right. Well, let's get back to the festival flags. Sure. And um, it all kicks off um, on Friday. Friday, am on I correct? Friday, that's correct. All right. We start out Friday morning, uh, early, kind of early. And now this is not on the festival grounds, but we have uh, Senior Citizens Bingo. And uh, the kind people at Four Winds Nursing uh, Facility sponsor that for us each year. And How Chris Walls fun. will be over there calling bingo numbers, and everybody can come in and play. He's and a good one to do that. He's a great one to do that. He's <laughs> the best one. And... Um, Anyway, but um, yeah, that'll that'll start us off that morning, and then all the concessions, the rides um, will open at noon, and then it'll just be an afternoon for people to enjoy. And then at five thirty in the evening, we have our official kickoff ceremony, our official opening ceremony. Okay, so the official <laughs> opening ceremony not till the evening, but things will already be things will already be going on. Up and running. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Question for you. Okay. Favorite ride at the Festival of Flags? Well, it's the Ferris wheel, of course, but the Ferris wheel won't be there this year because it was struck by lightning this past weekend. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, the, yes. So that is just further proof that 
<laughs> you, don't, you don't ride the ride. <laughs> this is true. This is true. I hope it wasn't Well, you know, I don't ride it. On it. I don't ride it because I don't like to be off the ground that far, you know. But I could, I have a traumatic experience from back in my teenage years with a fellow that made the seat rock, you know. Oh, and, one uh, of those and, and Since then, I do not do Ferris wheels. Yeah. But. Least, I think at least seeing you that weren't on Ferris the one that was struck by lightning. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather rock the seat. I hope it was grounded lightning. well. <laughs> but I think that Ferris wheel adds such a ambiance it to does. the whole, you know, just having it there. So I'm sorry that it won't be there this year. But um, Well, we'd rather it be uh, safe than <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, with the way things are now with supply chains, um, uh, the gentleman, uh, Colton Chicati, who um, – owns and operates um, the amusement company that does our rides, said that it's going to be weeks before he can even get the parts for it. So, so sad. I'm feeling so bad for him because yeah. that's going to impact his festival, you know, work. Well, of course, and, and as, as you said, the Ferris wheel, whether you get on it or not, is always the crowd favorite. Right, absolutely. You know? It's absolutely. just old school and, and fun and, and cool, and anyone can ride it, and... It's okay. Even if you're one of those people like me that gets sick on rides, like you can still ride that one yeah. and not be. No, uh, I don't get sick. I just get, I'm just a coward. So <laughs> <laughs> if it goes up too high, I don't want to be on it. I have a fear of heights. What is that called? Uh, I don't, I don't know, but I got it too. Do you? Girlfriend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Didn't know until I went rappelling with the Boy Scouts in college and I found out about my fear of heights real quick. But that's well, a whole other story that we can I get actually into. did. A kind know. of a little mini zip line thing. I thought, well, you know, I, well, I forgot how old I was, 74 or 70, uh, something. And, and I thought, well, I've never done it yet, and I'm not going to do it again if I don't hurry up. So <laughs> I just, <laughs> so one of the one of the kids in the band, we were in uh, Tennessee or somewhere. I was traveling with the band and uh, the high school band. And um, so they had this kind of a little mini zip line thing. So. I did that. So I could mark that off my list. There you go. Yeah. You did it. You survived. Yeah. I'm not going to do it again. I thought, sure, I was going to fall out. <laughs> yeah, I can I can hear that. Yeah. Hey, now, Friday night after we do the kickoff ceremony. Yes. Uh, getting back to the festival. Yes. Um, we're going to have the Rock House Band. They're... Um, uh, a tribute. They're like a big hair band tribute. There they are. There they are. Oh, they are so good. Um, I'm so excited. I We had them... Two or three years ago. Okay. And uh, liked them so much that we wanted to invite them back this year. They're great. Check out the drink. bagpipe guy, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what's... Oh, is that a Aren't kilt? They cute? He is a, yeah. I'm not going to ask the question. No. Nah. But he has flag. The answer is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Hope he doesn't fall down. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Jennifer, <laughs> that that's a, paints a pretty picture in your mind, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, no. But yeah, no. So that's so Friday night. I mean, you guys are kicking off like with a bang. Oh, we do. Yeah, that's we, awesome. We don't fool around. No, <laughs> we just love get that. going. Yeah. And then Saturday is Kids Day. Okay. Um, lots of things. Um, sorry, I got to get a drink of water. Um, no, the, the the pollen is definitely yeah, pollinating. It's killing me today. Yeah. We have the Mass and Jefferson Fire Department every year sponsors a fishing tournament for children. It's free. They can just oh, go out cool. to Jackson Lake and go fishing, and the fire guys are so there to fun. help them. Yeah, and that starts at 9 o'clock in the morning. Love and then it. at 10, we start uh, registering people for our Pretty Baby Contest, and that's always so popular. It is, and yeah. they're all beautiful. They, every one of them. I don't know how the judges pick yeah, one. but I don't either. Um, Draw a name out of a hat. Yeah, Raymond and Charlotte Darnell. Uh, sponsor that for us every year. So <coughs> then everything opens up at noon. Pretty Baby Contest starts uh, at 11. And then we'll announce the winners of the Pretty Baby Contest about 1 30 in the afternoon. Okay. Then we have free kids' activities. We're going to have chalk, uh, sidewalk chalk drawing and all kinds of other activities for the children. And then we're going to give them all free snacks about two o'clock in the afternoon. That's and that nice. again is sponsored by one of our local businesses, Cedar Heights Clay Company. Okay. And then um, the Queens pageant has moved this year. We're not, we didn't do an offsite pageant, a pre festival pageant. We're doing it at the festival. Okay. That was historically the way it was done. 
way back in the beginning. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've done the pageants. We've done the pageants. We've done, last year we did a, a smaller version of the pageant at the Liberty Theater, which yes. was a beautiful venue for that. Yes, it would be. And so we just got our heads together and thought, let's do it at the festival and let all the festival attendees see the whole thing and okay. and go through the process with us. So we're doing that on stage at 2 p.m., and we will not announce the winner until Sunday when we'll crown the, the new queens um, after our grand parade on Sunday. So okay. that'll be a fun time. Then, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, uh, 3.30 in the afternoon, there's a VIP event with Dwight Eisenhower uh, at the Liberty Theater. And there we've been selling tickets for that. And there's going to be a nice group of people there. There's going to be a free a lunch. They're going to oh, get a so lunch. Oh, so kind of like a meet and greet with a him. A meet and greet, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. And he's, he's so accommodating. He's so sweet. To do that, yeah. yeah. He's very, very good about that. And then at 4 o'clock on Saturday, keeping in the theme Kids Day, we have a group of young people in Oak Hill called the Crooked Foot Band. I think they played at the festival, uh, Apple Festival last year. Nice. Um, and, but they're Oak Hill kids, Oak Hill students. So good. And, um, so they're going to be on stage for us at 4 o'clock. And then Dwight in the Promised Land Band Saturday night. So it's a really jam-packed, busy day. And uh, it's going to be great. Yes, absolutely. And Matt tells me the weather's going to be good. It looks um, thus far like it's going to be pretty good. Well, I, you know, every day, every day for the past week, the first thing I do when I get up in the morning is look at the weather <laughs> forecast because last year on Sunday morning for the community church service, it was 49 degrees. And oh, we, my gosh. And, um, Se several people wanted me to move it to an indoor venue because we always have it right there on the festival right. stage. And I said, if people can go to a football game when it's 49 degrees, they can come to church when it's 49 degrees. Good for you. That's exactly right. Put on your parkas and let's go. There you go. It was cold. And I paid for it, too, because I sat up on that stage and shivered for the whole hour. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be doing the community church service again Wonderful. on Sunday, 11 o'clock. We have six churches in the village that participate in that. So most of them don't have their regular church service at their church that morning. They all come over there, and we all worship together at 11 o'clock. It's, it's great. I love that. That's yeah. neat. Um, in the afternoon, then, is our Queen's Tea. It's a luncheon. Um, for um, We have lots of visiting queens coming in. We have queens coming in from way up at, you know, four-hour drive. Yeah. Uh, coming in for that event. So uh, that'll be really good. And then Gary Everett, local Jackson guy, is going to be doing some music for us in the afternoon. So that's going to be fun. And uh, we have... Um, I think four, I might be three, but three or four uh, baton groups that are going to be doing some twirling exhibitions Ooh, fun. Yeah, before the parade starts. And then, of course, they'll join in the parade. So that'll be really great. Were so. you in a little baton group? I was. I was not. <gasps> I was. I was in the Legionettes. Really? Mm -hmm. Were you pretty good? I don't know. We'll have to call... <laughs> So the funny thing is my baton uh, group leader is now my accountant. <laughs> so we need to call oh, her and ask her if I was any good. That, that'd be a good question. That would be some for you to find out. Uh, it would be, but we yeah. were cute. I will give us that. And we won a lot of awards. Did you? Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thanks. And I was the horse queen <laughs> once too. Just is to that you know. right? Yeah. James knows this. <laughs> the Can horse confirm. queen. He can confirm he has seen video and picture evidence thereof. Yes, at the Jackson County Fair in 19, what was it, 90 or something like that? It was oh, a few I years ago. I don't know. I was like five. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I don't know. I wasn't born then. <laughs> anyway, I digress. But oh, yes. no. But no, um, the little baton groups, I'm so glad that they're kind of like coming back into yeah. it because it's it was just, I remember being a little girl and it was so fun to do. And we practiced and oh, absolutely. we competed and it was so good. Right. Yeah. Right. No. And you know, when, when I was you in. You got to march in parades. When I was in the band, we had major, majorettes. Yes. I remember a whole line of majorettes. Yes. And some of my friends were, you know, my classmates were majorettes. And, but I, you know, I was back there playing the clarinet. I didn't, <laughs> but anyway, but I was always in awe of their twirling abilities, mm -hmm. you know, and um, one of my favorite things in football season is watching the drum major at Ohio State. Yes. Because he's just, they're always so awesome. And he, the assistant drum major is as good as the drum oh, major. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. 
but yeah, I love I love that twirling stuff. So, yep. but we have um, there's Eclipse, and I I just should have made a note of the names because I can't remember them. But anyway, but I'm old, so uh, anyway. <laughs> but they're no, be you there. are not. I am. Well, you yeah. sh- no, you're not. Yeah, we we're, we're not going to accept that this this year. My my graduating class from the. Oak Hill High School will be celebrating our 60th anniversary of our graduation. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just a, a number. Yeah, it's just, it's a, just number. a number. Agreed. Okay. Then the Grand Parade is at 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. And uh, this year uh, we've chosen Martha Daddy Foster as our Grand Marshal. And I, I don't know if you know Martha. She, for many years, I think for about 15 years or so, was the fiscal officer uh, for Oak Hill, it, it was called the village clerk back then, okay. but it was basically a fiscal officer. She's been active in the Chamber of Commerce for many, many years, and she's just a wonderful woman, um, contributed an awful lot to our village, and we thought it was about high time. She got some recognition, so. That's right. Yeah, and she's excited about it. So she'll be um, leading the parade on Sunday. She'll also be ringing the centennial, the bicentennial bell. Okay. Which is housed in the gazebo at our, at Etna Park. And every year at the beginning of the festival, we ring that once for each year of the festival. So when I told her yesterday, she has to ring the bell 29 times. <laughs> Bring her earplugs. So she's bringing her son and her other son and her grandson. All these That's people, so her, her family will be with her to help her. So, yeah, it'll be really fun. So There's a copy of uh, today's paper sitting there right beside you. And if you look at the bottom half of the front page, there's an article about her. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. There she is. There she is. She's lovely. She's she lovely. is. Lovely lady. Absolutely. Yeah. So you can you can check out the front page of the Telegram and get That's a whole right. bunch of information yep. about Martha. She's super. Yep. Um, and then um, after the after the uh, parade, probably around five fifteen ish, uh, we'll be introducing all the visiting queens from the other festivals that have joined us and taken part in the parade and been at the luncheon. And then we'll be crowning our 2022 Festival of Flags Royalty. So All right. That'll be really fun. That'll happen about 5.30 p.m. on Sunday. And then we have uh, Woot and the Boys, the Red Brush Band, are going to play for love those them. guys. I love them. Talent, they, like, in their little the, finger more than their anybody musical, else. Uh, oh, gosh. Their, their instrument ability is just is Awe inspired. They're Being insane. a musician myself, I just sit there and go, oh, they do they're that. They're you know? crazy talented. They're wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're so thrilled that they can be back with us. And yeah. then, of course, at 730, uh, we have um, a young woman called Morgan White. Okay. Morgan is um, a kind of a local. She's from a little town in West Virginia, not too far from us. And she is an up-and-coming rising star down in Nashville. She's got a couple of records out. I just posted a video um, yesterday of one of her um, one of her records that she had released. It's really good. And she's there in Nashville. They have these different uh, associations of musicians or record companies or whatever. And she is nominated for so many awards uh, down there this year, including Jennifer fashionista on the stage you know what? <laughs> oh look but, at her but not she she's a cutie darling pie. she is darling and um you know she 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 is going to do really really well in the country music scene we're positive of that and um felicia and chris walls uh recommended um that the festival consider her they've known her for quite some time okay and uh so we're so fortunate that we were able to snatch her up Yay! and get her signed up before you know Things took off big time. Yeah, but no doubt, you know, wish her the best of luck. And I think everybody, um, all the country music fans, are really going to enjoy Morgan's performance on Sunday night. Um, so that sounds like a busy Sunday too, doesn't it? Uh, very. <laughs> you know, you think Saturday is like the big day, and then you start talking about Sunday yeah. where you have the parade and yeah. all the other stuff going yeah. on. And you're like, so. Oh. I mean, it's it's jam packed, and I tell you what, the committee that um, with which I work to plan all these events is is the most wonderful group of people. They they for a long time when I first uh, when Dan Brisker came to me and said, Joyce, I don't I can't do this anymore. I want you to do this, and this was 
a bunch of years ago. A few years and, ago. And so, okay, I'm thinking, okay, who's going to help me? Who's going to help me? So I invited Chris Walls, and then Chris came, and then his beautiful wife, Felicia, came. Mm-hmm. And then we were lucky enough to get Jennifer Hughes mm-hmm. and Scott, her husband. He's always there to help us. And then uh, we got, you know, more people, and then we got Autumn Perkins, and then we got Scott Perkins. And, um, I mean, we just have just a great, great group of people, Mike and Debbie Queen. And then we have people in the in the village that will volunteer. A friend of mine, <clears throat> we were working together at the food pantry on Monday, and she said, now, do you need any help at the festival? And I said, probably. She said, well, just call me. So, I mean, oh, well, there you yeah, go. Just call me. So, people are like that, and uh, they all want to pitch in and help make it a success. It's a wonderful thing for the village. It is. And I, I love <clears throat> um, the village of Oak Hill because you all are tight knit and, and have each other's backs. I really? think that's really, really cool. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Monday, then, Memorial Day, Monday. We start out the morning with pancakes. Pancakes. Yeah. That's oh, the, and, and that's the star event, in my opinion. I was going to say. It's, it's if there's a, anything I that I think, I think of, it's that pancake a, breakfast. There should be a pancake breakfast all four days. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Well, I'd now, our good friends at the Oak Hill Presbyterian Church put on that breakfast for us. And uh, I yesterday, was that yesterday only? <laughs> um, I, I met Steve Evans at his little warehouse down what is that? Rodney Pike or where? Yeah. yeah. Yep. And um and anyway, and he gave me boxes and boxes of Steve Edgeman's sausage. And, and there is none better, by no, the way. No, there isn't. Just it's to let it's you know. absolutely the best. The only kind I ever buy. Yep. But Speaking anyway, of Steve, um, we're actually going to hear from him in a few minutes on the show. Oh, Steve? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we are. Yeah. Oh, about the Ohio about University. The Ohio University, University yeah. Collaboration. Collaboration. So that's a oh good oh, segue, that's James. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but he's such a great guy, and uh, we we always watch. We watch every Monday of the festival at the pancake breakfast. So we we keep looking to see that big Panama hat coming in. <laughs> yep, <laughs> he usually makes an appearance and comes in, you know, and and chats with us and has some breakfast. And so we we look That's forward great. to that. And we've uh, we've named it now the Jack Thomas Memorial because Jack was instrumental in getting his church group to start doing this for the festival. So it's just become a tradition. So yeah. now Jack's gone and we honor him that way. And then um, our band and others will be participating in the all the Memorial Day activities at the various cemeteries mm-hmm. um, around the, there's a parade that goes out there. And then in the afternoon, now the car show, we totally outgrew our space for the car show. <laughs> Doesn't I mean, surprise me. It was we were so packed in there last year. It was like sardines. Chris Walls is the car show person. Yes, and um, I think he'll be here tomorrow I to think, talk about yeah, it. He's yeah. coming in to talk with you guys and mad about it. But um, so he'll be able to give you a lot of details on that. I just kind of try to support him however I can. But he does such a great job, and so we're having it this year at the Oak Hill. Middle High School parking okay. lot in their oh, upper okay. parking lot. And then the athletic boosters will be running a concession stand up there that day. So nice. it's a win. It's a win win. Uh, they were kind enough to let us use it so that we could expand the number of cars. Sure. And then the boosters um, will get to have a little. Hey, there you go. Something, something for their work too. So, but at the festival grounds, in the meantime, back at the festival grounds, we'll be having the karaoke contest. Oh, so that's going to be a whole lot of fun. Are you a singer? I used to be. I don't. I cough too much anymore with all my allergies. It kind of messes Heard. up singing. That's so what I, I would like to blame it on too. I'm I, only I the I'm, I'm only the much. piano player now. <laughs> gotcha. So, what was your song of choice for karaoke? For karaoke, for mine, mm-hmm. you really want to know? Yeah. Chain, 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 chain. Oh. <laughs> Aretha. Yes. Chain well, of Fools. Yeah. Actually, I won a karaoke contest one time, and I sang The Rose. Remember that? Love that. Bette Midler. That was sung at my yes. wedding, actually. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I sang that. I had a karaoke, and I don't, I don't won. But uh, I was on a cruise a few years ago, and there was a gal that wanted to do um an Aretha, another Aretha Franklin song, and she needed a backup singer. <laughs> My sisters and I were on this cruise together. You know? <laughs> so she says she wants a backup singer. And I go, you know, I'll do and it. So, so I did. So it, it was, a, it was the most fun we had. My sisters were like, we don't know this person. <laughs> <laughs> so I just have another drink here. Yeah, really. All but right. Anyway, then we, we shut down at four o'clock on yeah. Monday and 
So it'll be a full day, all day, Monday. So yeah, so you guys are, the interesting thing about obviously the Festival of Flags, Memorial Day weekend, not many people working on Monday. So right. the festival continue on, right. continues on all the way through right. Monday, which is fantastic. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Well, you got a nice, wonderful. You got a nice comment here, uh, Joyce. I just wanted to read this to you real quick. Barbara, yes. Barbara Summers says, you are one of the best cogs in the Oak Hill wheel and she loves seeing you. Good luck with the weather for the festival. And love you back, lineup. Barbara. <laughs> yes. Oh, Barbara She's Summers is one of my favorite people. Me yeah. too. Yeah. She's amazing. She's great. She is. All right. Well, geez, that was a lot. So, okay. So parking, where is the festival held exactly? All of that stuff. I mean, if you drive in No Kill, you can pretty much see it. If you it, drive in No Kill, you can't miss it. That's why the Ferris wheel is there. But uh, yeah. it's in Etna Park. Mm -hmm. It's uh, immediately adjacent to the Oak Hill Village uh, building, the yes. offices where the police department uh, and the mayor's office and everybody's in that building. Right, And that's right next to the Piggly Wiggly store. And Correct. Our little, I call it the Oak Hill Mall. It's the Piggly Wiggly. And <laughs> I like the, it. The CVS and the dollar, the family dollar. And uh, we park in that in that lot. We park wherever okay. we can find a place to park. Okay. And um, all the activities, except for the car show and the breakfast, you know, a few a few things. Most all the activities happen right on the grounds here at, at the park okay. at Edna Park. All right. And you have um, do you have like a Facebook page or a website? We have or? a Facebook page, Oak Hill Festival Flags. Okay, so you can and find information right, there. Information on there and our website, Oak Hill Festival of Flags dot org. Okay. And um, on there, you'll find the history of the festival. You'll find the schedule. Uh, each year's updated photos of our royalty um, and a list of all our sponsors, which are the most important part because without them, we couldn't have the festival. So uh, the village really steps up and I want, I can't, I can't fail to mention that donors of uh, businesses and individuals uh, in the village and some in surrounding areas here in Jackson have donated enough money this year for the festival to be mm -hmm. able to provide free ride passes for a day to every student at the Oak Hill Elementary School. It's 580 plus students. That is so amazing. I love it that. It is. And that that's one of my, fa I'm getting goosebumps. That's I one know. of my favorite parts. No you know, kid that, should not be able to ride. That's right. You know? Absolutely. That's not cool. Absolutely. So uh, we're, we're so thrilled. Um, this is the second or third year we've done that. And the businesses and individuals in the, in the village just step up and say, hey, I want those children to have a good day. You know, so it's Love wonderful. It. Yeah. Very good. Well, Joyce, is there anything that we didn't cover today? Good grief. I don't think so. I think we did a pretty good job. You are just full of it today. I am. In a good way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I have a question. If thank you, you want to get, uh, you're welcome. But, uh, so if you want to get tickets to the VIP dinner and the reserved seats for Dwight's concert, how do you get those? You contact Jennifer Hughes. Um, and it's, uh, all the information is on our Facebook page about oh, the cool. event. Yeah. All right. So that's easy to, to right. find. And then James will post the link, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We got a link to the website in the comments. And like, like she said, it's just uh festival, Oak Hill Festival of Flags on Facebook. Right. I had there it up here go. a second ago, but I lost it. But yeah. <laughs> it's easy to find. Oak Hill Festival of Flags. Yes. It is. Can't miss it. Okay. All right. Well, Miss Joyce, thank you so much for coming in. It's always delightful to see you, Jennifer. Well, right back at you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. And all the best in all your new ventures. Oh, well, thanks. You never know what we're going to get into. <laughs> well, that's what keeps life interesting, is it, it not? <laughs> or crazy or there all of go. the above. All of the above. That's what makes it fun, right? Thank you. Thank you, James. You're welcome. All right. Well, hey, let's do that weather forecast while we're... Yeah, I don't know. I think Matt may have uh, given you some... <laughs> I, you know, Nick's Matt's an optimist. Yeah, what can he may I have say? been a little bit optimistic about well, the weather. Well, no, see, I'm looking at this and I'm looking at it as a very positive because you are talking about Friday. Well, 50 50 chance of rain, but look at those temperatures all the way through um, uh, the it weekend. It's going to be warm. No, 49 it's going degrees. To be nice. so that's, so that's a 90% yeah. chance of rain. Well, okay, there's a 10% chance of rain. Oh, is that 90%? It says yeah, that's 90. 50. Oh, well, that's just one day. Yeah, and, and it's probably only going to rain uh, before noon. There you go. I like that. That's you, optimistic. You think? 
I sure. think that's fair. We've sure. had rain it's, before. So, but it, it'll be fine. I mean, you bring your, and my friends in England call it brawly, your umbrella. Your brawly. Your brawly. Okay. Your brawly. And come on over and uh, we'll have fun anyway. That's right. Yeah. Because Joyce will be there. For sure. There you uh-huh. go. And the French Thanks fry. Again, Jennifer. French Thank fry you. booth will be there too. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, James, you know more than I yes. do about um, the video in which mm-hmm. we have. But you headed over to Rio Grande yesterday. Yeah. Uh, so you've got a little uh, printout there. But basically, yes. Rio Grande announced a partnership with The Ohio State University to bring agriculture programs to Rio Grande, Rio Grande Community College. That's right. And um, 60 years ago, um, the University of Rio... So this is so interesting because it's come full circle. It really is. Uh, Bye, Joyce. Thank you. Um, So 60 years ago, the University of Rio Grande and Rio Grande Community College sold portions of its land to restaurateur Bob Evans to mm-hmm. add to the Bob Evans Farm, the original you know restaurant there and right. old farm place. Well, now the Bob Evans Farm has given the land mm-hmm. back right. to Rio. So cool. Yeah, isn't that kind of funny? It is very, very uh, ironic. So and and um, that was done actually back in 2017. A portion of that land was given back. But um, so big presentation yesterday and. You uh, went down, so I think you have a a video about that. Yeah, so here we're going to hear from uh, Rio Grande President Ryan Smith, and we're also going to hear from, like we mentioned, Steve Evans and Steve's uh, sister Debbie. Okay, let's go to it. 60 years ago, University of Rio Grande and Rio Grande Community College sold a portion of its land to restaurateur Bob Evans. Then, in 2017, a portion of that very same land was donated back to Rio by the Bob Evans Corporation. Tuesday morning, the university hosted a special event to announce that the school would be offering a new program utilizing that land. So the program itself, we're starting with a beef science, meat science, animal welfare focus. Um, Rio Grande will take care of teaching the gen eds, and then we'll use Ohio State's professors to deliver the specialized courses, since that's their expertise. Uh, We hope to build into that into the future and take some pressure off of their faculty, because it's not a long-term sustainable plan. Um, So I think that's what you'll see going forward. Um, and it's a two-year um, associates in technical studies degree from Rio Grande, and then, as you heard, a potential pathway to Rio, or I'm sorry, the Ohio State University and a bachelor's degree. There's about a give or take 150 acres of grazable land, the flat part, okay. yeah, that you can kind of see, and then there's 270 total and wooded area and 15 miles of bike and hike trails. What you'll see is that you'll have a barn over here uh, in the in the back corner. Okay. Um, and we'll have all of this fenced in. They'll do rotational grazing, depending on whether it's cattle or sheep, whatever it might be. Um, so it'll kind of cover everything. I'm thrilled because, you know, agriculture is such a big part of who we are in Southeast Ohio. And um, this opens up the opportunity for people to stay closer to home because for too long they've had to go to uh, Ohio State or Worcester, which is four hours away, or maybe Wilmington, Moorhead. I mean, they're, you have to travel. And now they have a chance to maybe stay on the family farm and get an education here um, and open up some pathways beyond that. Among those in attendance on Tuesday were two of the late Bob Evans' children, and they shared what they believe their father would have thought of this announcement. Agriculture was dad's love, his lifelong love. Beef cattle, the land, agriculture, those were his passions. And finding ways to keep people on the family farm. And this program will definitely provide that opportunity. I think Dad would be very happy that uh, agriculture education is, 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 going, is going to take place on this farm. Do you remember him saying that uh, uh, he started in the business to pay the mortgage on the farm? That was, I've heard him say that many times that you know, it was, his first love was the farm and he really, uh, his goal was to pay the mortgage on the farm and keep it going. So you know, early on he was a farmer more than anything else. He would be very, very excited about it. On, really excited. He, uh, yeah. more than anything, he enjoyed coming home, getting in the pickup truck, driving up the hill with his shovel to relieve a drainage problem somewhere, cutting down the cattails in the pond, whatever, doing something for the land. That was his love. So um, he's he's happy today. And this, this place has come full circle. It will once again be used for something um, 
to promote the welfare of our community. I think it's going to be fun to watch and see everything evolves over time. I know in Dad's later years, he was big. He was really, really a, a huge proponent of year-round grazing, which was mm -hmm. a, a rotational pasture land grazing for beef cattle. It was something relatively new in this area, this part of the country. So, you know, it'd be fun to see what, what new ag practices evolve and take place in the shape of agriculture going forward. It might, some of it might happen right here on this farm. So be, Dad would love that. In his retirement, he worked with Ed Volburn, a local, uh, uh, a local family, and Ed was just so knowledgeable. And he and Dad, they, they studied plants. They would studied, um, what was it, Steve? What was the plant with the green that the cattle? Well, they studied a, a number of exotic plants yeah. that would grow uh, better in this. They, used, turnips, they actually got grass turnips. in from Siberia to try to grow Russian uh, yeah. grasses that would grow in the wintertime in southern Ohio, so you didn't have to. You didn't have to cut hay, you didn't have to bale hay. One of the big things is saving you the cost of machinery and the labor cost of baling and stacking and storing hay. If you could grow grass, it would grow year round. Cattle have been grazed on. So, you know, it was, it was a concept that has worked in other parts of the world. That He actually ran into this in New Zealand on a trip and they were doing it in New Zealand. And uh, he was just totally fascinated and we tried to bring it to this part of, of America. So, yeah. You know, I will add that dad worked often with Ohio State. He tapped into the Ohio State professors often for their knowledge on these items. Yep. Sometimes he agreed, sometimes he disagreed. Sometimes he learned, sometimes they learned. They worked together. And so this, this really is about that again. So it's, it's, it's wonderful. And I'm just looking forward to the growth of this program. For the full story on the partnership between Rio Grande and The Ohio State University, see the Wednesday, May 25th edition of The Telegram, and you can watch this event in its entirety on the Total Media Facebook page. Thanks, Bob Evans. Thanks, everybody, for participating and coming out. Appreciate it.